Yarmouk, a rebel-held area of Damascus, for months under siege and bombarded by Syrian government forces. Now a trickle of aid has arrived. These people can't wait much longer for a peace deal. This woman says, we've received nothing. Our children are dying of hunger. Are we animals? Two days ahead of long-anticipated talks in the Swiss town of Montreux, the UN Secretary General has dropped a diplomatic bombshell, an invitation to Iran. Foreign Minister Jarif and I agree that the goal of the negotiations is to establish, by mutual consent, a transitional governing body with the full executive powers. It was on that basis that Foreign Minister Zarif pledged that Iran would play a positive and constructive role in Montreux. Washington seemed shocked as Iran hasn't signed up to last year's Geneva peace agreement. A spokeswoman said if Iran doesn't fully and publicly accept the Geneva communique, the invitation must be rescinded. Iran's relations with the West have thawed under the country's new president, Hassan Rouhani. Only today the country began implementing a nuclear deal to stop enriching uranium. But concern is fueled by decades of distrust and Iran's backing of President Assad. As the fractured rebels continue their battle, Syria's main opposition group has now threatened to pull out of the talks. Just on Saturday, it had finally agreed to take part. So the talks are looking ever more precarious, not least because President Assad says they should be about fighting terrorism rather than a change of government. The logical thing that we've been talking about continuously is that the Geneva Conference comes out with clear results in relation to combating terrorism in Syria especially in terms of pressurizing the countries that export terror to Syria. Every day, desperate Syrians flee their country. The talks may yet go ahead, but for these people, relief from their suffering seems as distant as ever. Emily Buchanan, BBC News.